Hey everyone, Radical Dreamer Steve back at you with another gaming video, and this time I'm talking about literally the most popular game out right now, Elden Ring. Now, I am playing this game with no previous Soulsborne experience. That means I've never played a uh, Dark Souls game, and I very, very, very briefly played Bloodborne, but not enough to even tell if I really like the game or not. So far, Elden Ring has been terrifying, frustrating, rewarding, and mostly it's just been wildly interesting and something that I've never really experienced before. For some reason for me, this is the first time I've jumped into the series, so I'm wondering what is it about this game that has made me and many other people finally decide to try the series, and what is it like for someone who's pretty new to the series? I'm really making this video to outline my experience and what a lot of new players might need to consider before diving in. And maybe this video will help you avoid a few of the mistakes, well, a few of the many mistakes I've made with the game so far. So the first thing and the most obvious thing to talk about here is the difficulty is steep. Yes, of course, these games are notorious for being really high difficulty, requiring a lot of strategy and a huge time investment uh, from the player. Now, in Elden Ring, I don't think the difficulty is so brutal you can't beat the game or experience it, but there are a ton of monsters that can wreck you. And the easiest ways, in my opinion, to tell which enemies you're probably not going to fare well against are either swarms of enemies or giant enemies. In the beginning of the game, especially before you really upgrade anything, giant enemies are a telltale sign you're about to get your butt wrecked. Also, swarms of enemies, not usually the best thing to jump jump into unless you know you can handle it. So what I recommend is getting to a save point. If you get to an enemy and you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to take on this giant with this sword that's literally 10 times the length of my entire body. Well, what I recommend doing is going to a save point, uh, maybe using your runes to level up or something. But anyway, get to a save point first, then fight that enemy. Uh, if you die after that, you can just get your runes back and leave that guy alone. And that leads me to another point here is that if you die multiple times in the same area, especially if it's just you're not even coming close to killing the enemies, they're just absolutely wrecking house with you, just come back later. Elden Ring has a vast open world and you can explore it basically however you want. And so there's no reason to get just get yourself so angry you rage quit and break a controller just because you can't beat a single area. But one thing that's sort of outside of combat that I think a lot of people are going to be surprised about is just how cryptic the items are and how hard some of the systems are to understand. Now, the items, you can press square on them in your inventory. Well, square if you're playing a PS5 or PS4 version of the game. Um, and you can find out a detailed explanation of what the item is and what the item does. However, don't expect the game to hold your hand at all. Though the explanation might be there, you might need to kind of actually use the item or toy around to figure out what it is. And I still have a ton of items in my inventory that I basically have no idea what they do. And there's a lot of systems in this game. There's weapons, there's magic, there's spirit summons, there's like a kind of special magical attacks you can attach to your items. There's a lot going on. So in the beginning of this game, you probably you will probably feel overwhelmed. Just go slowly, take your time and try to understand the systems and especially understand what stats relate to each system. For instance, if you want to use magic, you're going to have to probably level up your faith stat a little bit. But if you're a melee class, that might not be the best idea to invest too much in magic. Make sure you understand what your class is, what weapons they can use, and what stats correlate to what battle skills. Moving on, one thing that's really interesting about Elden Ring is that the fact that it has a lack of any kind of hub objective markers and that typical pointer that tells you where to go next. You are literally just tossed into the world after, well, okay, there's a little training cave you do in the beginning, but as soon as you finish that, you're literally tossed into the world. And unlike a game like Breath of the Wild that's divided into very four very obvious subregions with a major dungeon, Elden Ring isn't as linear. Now, one thing to notice is that the Sites of Grace, the save points, sort of all point in a different direction. That actually tells you where to go next. So if you want to play the game in a more linear fashion without worrying too much about getting lost and kind of getting your butt kicked by really strong enemies, just kind of get to the Sites of Grace, look at where they're pointing you, and then try to get to the next Site of Grace and keep building from there. But just keep in mind, you're probably going to have to explore a little bit around those areas uh, to find some certain items and level up and stuff like that. Now, when it comes to side quests, a lot of people recommend you use a notebook. I'm not doing that, but 
you don't get any help with a side quest. If you meet an NPC, you can put like a beacon on your map to remember where it is, but there's no quest log. There's nothing that tracks your quests that are finished or unfinished. And remembering locations and NPCs and side quests can be very challenging in Elden Ring. Now, why don't I do the notebook thing? Um, this game is huge. Um, I just feel like this game is so massive that no matter what I experience or what I miss, I'm still going to have a really epic journey. That I'm not trying to be a completionist, first of all. That's something I should point out. Is I'm not trying to 100% quit this game or get a platinum trophy or anything. I'm just trying to enjoy it. So I don't feel like I need to jot down where these NPCs and stuff are. That said, I have used my beacon on a couple of them to remember where they are. Another thing that's a real turnoff or possibly a point of interest for a lot of people, is this game basically has no real story. There's just a ton of lore, I mean a ton of lore, and a ton of exploration. Yes, the beginning you're going to find out that there was something called the Elden Ring, it was shattered, it threw the world into chaos, um, but that's about as much story as you're going to get, you know? There, you're going to have to kind of unravel the story of how the world came to be through very cryptic uh, scenarios with NPCs and side quests and stuff, but you're not going to really have a full understanding of this world, most likely at any point in time. Uh, the lack of the story, though, in my opinion, makes the lore and the design really pop out. The thing is, when I know exactly what happens in an RPG, I don't really think about you know, castles and stuff. I know, okay, that's just part of this world. But with Elden Ring, I don't know what happened to this world exactly. I don't know exactly who everyone is. I don't know exactly who these castles and ruins belong to. I don't know why they're there. I don't know how long they've been dilapidated. So it really kind of makes you think more and piece together the world, sort of like you're an archaeologist uh, exploring an ancient ruin. And I find that fascinating. Not many games have ever really gotten me to think this way. And I thought I would hate it, but actually I have a kind of a big appreciation for the lore and just the world building uh, and the crypticness that Elden Ring presents. Usually, I do prefer more of a story. But one thing that I also have to add to that is not caring about the story has sort of made me feel less objective-based in Elden Ring. Instead of beating the game, beating the next boss, getting to the next major dungeon, I just go off and explore and I ride around, I find stuff, and I've never been disappointed with my kind of just exploring and finding new dungeons and items and leveling up. And I know that if I really want to continue and kind of go on track to beat the game, I can always kind of return to the sites of grace. But this game has really got me more into exploration rather than just being completely objective based. So a mixed bag, in my opinion, some people are really going to gravitate to this and some people are going to find this really hard to stomach and probably not quite as engaging. So it really depends on your personality. One thing you really need to know about this game, um, especially if you've not played Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight's this really uh, well-adored Metroidvania game, 2D, really beautiful. And every time you die, you lose your... Well, in Hollow Knight, I forget what it is. In Elden Ring, you lose your runes, which you can use runes to level up, increase... Uh, you can use them to buy things. They're basically your currency for everything in Elden Ring. Hollow Knight, I forget what they're called, but you lose your upgrade points, whatever they were called in that game. I haven't played it in ages. When you die, you're going to lose all your runes. However, if you can get back to them before you die again, you can get most, if not all of them back. I'm not. I'm actually still not exactly sure how that works. Sometimes I get 100% of my runes back, and sometimes I get as low as something like 50 to 75%. I don't mind this system, but you have to be very careful not to get too headstrong, especially when it comes to boss rooms. You can always tell where a boss room is. There's sort of this like colorful wall to go into first that designates like, okay, you're about to fight a boss. And me, being the headstrong idiot that I am, decided a few times with like 7,000 runes earlier in the game to just go march in and try to fight the boss. Well, what happens is you get absolutely wrecked and your runes are stuck in the boss room. So unless you can go back in there, grab your runes and beat the boss, which will be really hard if you just got absolutely mopped with the floor with, your runes are totally lost. When you have a lot of runes, be very careful. Spend them before fighting bosses. That's my biggest tip there. Don't be me. The last thing I really want to mention for beginning players is that upgrades are not a given. Most games, you know you're going to get your magic, your summons, and all these systems are going to be given to you and explained to you, and you're not going to have to do too much work to sort of figure out what abilities you have access to and how to use them. However, in Elden Ring, you can totally miss vital upgrades like Ash Summons, Magic Ability, and uh, Ashes of War, and so on. This is partially class-dependent, I would say. Like, uh, I chose a hero as my character. 
So I don't really use magic. I try to level up my faith to use like low level magic spells, but I don't really use magic in this game. I mostly use my physical attacks. So that's not really important. But the point is, is like um, something like you could totally miss having certain uh, summon ashes. I heard players playing this game for tens of hours and not having a single summon, which I can't imagine because those things save my butt so many times. So I really recommend with this game, if you're a noob like myself with Elden Ring, go use the beginner's guide for the first few hours. I know some players are going to frown upon that and say you just need to experience it 100% by yourself, but this is a complex game. If you're having a really hard time and not enjoying the first few hours, check out one of these beginner's guides. Chances are you missed an item, you missed something crucial. You might as well get everything you need in those first few hours, kind of understand the game and give yourself a leg up because that's really going to be the only way you're not going to give up the game if you're just completely overwhelmed and frustrated in the beginning. And also my final tip there uh, is explore the map beyond what you have. Uh, you have to find pieces of the map and it's really obviously having that map is better. Like, But I would say if you don't have an area of the map, don't be afraid to kind of leave that area. For the first 10 to 15 hours, I was like too afraid to leave the first map area I was in. I mean, I explored it to death. I thought everything outside of it would just like kill me. As I couldn't beat Margit uh, in the first dungeon, I died him so many times. Eventually, I was like, okay, I'm getting so bored of this game. Try to fight this boss. I'm just going to go explore. And it was really rewarding. And I was like, oh my God, I should have done this like five, 10 hours ago. I should have been exploring these other areas. Like, you'll find other parts of the map. You'll find upgrades to give you more health potions. You'll level up more. Don't be afraid to explore more than the small area you initially started. My conclusion with Elden Ring so far is that I think it's a really incredible game. And if you are on the fence about it, kind of like I was for a long time, I think you should at least try it. I generally like difficult games, but the Dark Souls games always seemed a bit too masochistic for me. However, Elden Ring is a bit more tame than something like Dark Souls. I think it has more frequent save points, and there's a lot more ways you can play it. And it's a very, very difficult game. Like, I die every single time I play it. But I do feel like it's fair. And I always feel like my deaths are mostly attributable to mistakes I make or going to areas with enemies that are too strong. So I say try it. Don't let the difficulty be, be the reason not to play it because it is manageable as long as you're smart and take the time to learn the game. That said, though, people with that don't really have the time to put into this game, I don't really think it's worth buying, to be honest with you. If you can only put like two hours into this game a week, I think you're going to have a hard time really getting into it, understanding it, and maximizing your enjoyment. You don't need to play it eight hours a day, but I do feel like it is a game that demands uh, regular playtime and really rewards players who are willing to immerse themselves more in the world. So I think if you don't have a lot of time, that's the one exception where I'd say maybe hold off on buying it until you have more time to dedicate towards uh, Elden Ring. And I think we're really truly seeing a genre definer here. Elden Ring is going to have so many imitators, so many borrowers. Uh, everyone likes to compare it to Breath of the Wild. I don't think it's better. I don't think it's worse. I think it's just different. Now, I probably prefer Breath of the Wild personally because I like the puzzles. Um, and I thought the difficulty was a bit more my level. But that doesn't mean I think it's a better game than Elden Ring because Elden Ring does some stuff that blows my mind. Finally, the last thing I'm going to say here. I like Elden Ring. I'm pretty new to it, but I do feel like I've learned a ton in the first like 20, 30 hours I've played it. And beating the first dungeon and major boss like truly felt like a gaming accomplish accomplishment. And I don't say that lightly because I'm in my 30s now and I played a lot of games. And you know, beating a whole game sometimes doesn't really feel like an accomplishment if that game isn't challenging or doesn't really kind of bring something new to the table. So the fact that I'm saying this, uh, the developers really made something really special here. And you should definitely try it if you're interested on the fence and have the time to play. All right, guys, tell me your thoughts. What did you think about playing Elden Ring? Did you guys play the other uh, From Software games first? And do you think it affected your experience or not? All right, game on, and I'll catch you in the next video.